Hello everyone. I am your friend Shada Imam and today we are going to see another very beautiful problem on simulation. So please watch this video till the end and if you are new to the channel please subscribe the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon. So today we are going to see problem on bakery stocks. So let us move ahead and let us first understand the steps in Monte Carlo simulation. So we have already done this in our previous lecture and along with this we have seen the introduction, advantages, limitation and application of simulation. So if you have not watched the previous video, please go and watch the previous video first. So let us have a recap of this. So the first step in the Monte Carlo simulation is to find the objective of the problem. So here we need to find out whether our objective is of maximization type or minimization type. Then we need to determine the variable that interests the objective. So here we need to identify the variable which affects the objective function or we can say which affects the maximum or minimum value. Next is to find the probability. Now probability can either be directly given in the problem or else we need to find out the probability. And then we need to determine the cumulative probability. Next step is to select the random numbers using the random number tables. Now in our simulation, Monte Carlo simulation problems, the random numbers are usually given in the problem. And if the random numbers are not given in the problem, then we will use the random number tables to select the random numbers. And after selecting the random numbers, we need to find the random number allocation. Now, random number allocation means the random number which we have selected, we need to identify that those random numbers are falling in which random number interval. Now, we will know in a while what is random number interval. So after finding the random number allocation, we are able to determine the corresponding variable of interest. That means we will able to find the value of the selected variable. And after getting the value of these variable, we need to simulate the model for the given number of events. So these are the procedures laid down and let us understand this with the help of a example problem. So this is our problem. So let us see. The problem says that a bakery keeps stock of a popular brand of cakes. Daily demand based on past experience is given below. So here daily demand is given which is 0, 15, 25, 35, 45 and 50. And their corresponding probabilities. 0 0.01, 0 0.15, 0 0 0.50, 0 0.12 and 0.02 and the random numbers are given in our problem. Now first thing is using the sequence simulate the demand for the next 10 days. Now we need to simulate the demand of cakes for the next 10 days using these random numbers. So these are 10 random numbers given in the problem. And on the basis of this sequence, we need to simulate the demand for next 10 days. And the second thing it asks is find the stock situation if the owner of the bakery decides to make 35 cakes every day. Also estimates the daily average demand for the cakes on the basis of the simulated data. So here we need to find out the stock after 10 days when the bakery makes 35 cakes every day and we need to also estimate the daily average demand. So let us see the solution of this problem. So in order to solve this problem we need to find the demand for the next 10 days and we need to find the random number allocation to the next 10 days. So in order to find the random number allocation we need to make a table so here we have already written random numbers which will help us to write here. Now in this table we can see that there is a demand which is already mentioned in the problem 0, 15, 25, 35, 45 and 50. 
Similarly, the probability is also mentioned in the problem 0 0.01, 0 0.15, 0 0.20, 0 0.50, 0 0.12 and 0 0.02. And we have already calculated the cumulative probability here. So which is 0 0.01. 0.16 which is the addition of these two, 0.36 which is the addition of these three. So here we have cumulative probability. Now we need to identify this random number interval we have discussed previously. So this random number interval we need to be very careful because when we are seeing this cumulative probability this is 0 0.01. This means that we will consider it as one or we can say that we will move this decimal two places ahead so this will become one now in random number interval we will eliminate the last digit and take the previous digits first so this is one so we will eliminate the one and we will save it for the next demand and here our random number interval will be zero so here we can see that this is 0. Now 1 will be the starting number in the second row and this is 16. So we will left out 16 and our random number interval will go up to 15. So here we can see that from 1 it has gone up to 15. Similarly the 16th value is the starting of this row 3 and this is 0 0.36. So the maximum value here will be 35 that means 16 to 35 and we will left out the 36th value. So here we can see that this is 16 to 35. Similarly we will start here with 36 and we will go up to 85 because this is 0 0.86 and we will left the 86th value. So here we can see that this is 36 to 85. Similarly, we will start here with 86 and goes up to 97 and we will left the 98 value. And here we can see that 98 and 99, these are two values. Now this is the random number interval and we need to be very careful while calculating this random number interval. Now after this we need to find out the random number allocation. And in random number allocation, we will see that these random numbers which are mentioned in the problem falls in which of the random number interval. Suppose the first random number is 48. So we can see that 48 lies between 36 and 85. So here the random number interval will be 48 and it lies between 36 to 85. And this suggests that the first event which is having random number 48 will have the demand of 35. Similarly, we will take the second number 78. So we can see that 78 also lies between 36 to 85. So from here we can see that the second event which is having the random number 78 is also having the demand of 35 cakes. Similarly, let us see the third random number 09. So 9 lies between the random number interval 1 to 15. So here the third event is this and which is having the random number 9 and this shows that the demand at this event is 15 cakes. And similarly we will find the random number allocation for all the 10 values. So here we have find out the random number allocation for all the 10 random numbers. Now on the basis of this we have to simulate the demand of cakes. So let us simulate here after finding the random number allocation we need to simulate the demand corresponding to allocated random numbers for next 10 days. So we are going to simulate here the demand. So here we can see that these are days from 1 to 10. And these are corresponding random number which is already mentioned in the problem. And, and here these are the corresponding demands which we have already calculated in our previous table. So in the previous table we have seen that random number 48 has a demand of 35. 
Random number 78 has a demand of 35, random number 9 has a demand of 15 and so on. And we have also seen in the problem that the bakery makes 35 cakes every day. So here every day bakery is making 35 cakes. Now we need to identify the stock at the end of the day. So we can see here for day 1 the bakery makes 35 cakes and the demand is 35. So all the 35 cakes are being consumed here. So the stock left at the end of day 1 is 0. Similarly for day 2 we can see that the cake produced is 35 and the demand is 35. So here all the 35 cakes are consumed and at the end of day 2 also the stock is 0. And in day 3 the bakery produces 35 cakes and the demand is 15. So out of 35, only 15 cakes are consumed and 20 cakes are remaining as stock at the end of day. Now, day 4, we have seen that the bakery has produced 35 cakes and the demand is also 35. So all the 35 cakes has been consumed so here the stock is again 20 which is carry forward from the previous day and now let us again see day 5 we have bakery produces cake 35 and the demand is also 35 so all the 35 cakes are being consumed here and here the stock is still 20 which has been carry forward from the previous day similarly for day 6 the cake produce is 35 and the demand is 35 so all the 35 cakes are consumed here and the stock is remain 20 which is carry forward from the previous day similarly in day 7 the cake produced is 35 and the demand here is 15 so here out of 35 only 15 cakes are consumed so 20 cakes are remaining and 20 from the previous day so 20 plus 20 the cakes at the end of day is 40 so stock at the end of day 7 is 40 similarly for day 8 the cake produce is 35 the demand is 15 so out of 35 15 is consumed and 20 is remaining and these 20 cake will add up to this stock so the stock at the end of day 8 is 60 cakes similarly for day 9 we can see that bakery produces 35 cakes and the demand is 35 so all the 35 cakes are consumed here and the stock at the end of day 9 is carry forward by the previous day which is 60. For the 10th day the bakery produces 35 cakes and the demand is 15 so out of 35 15 is consumed and 20 is remaining so this 20 will add up with the previous stock 60 and the stock remaining at the end of 8th day is 80 cakes. So here we can say that at the end of 10 days the cakes as stock remaining is 80 cakes. Now we need to find out the average demand for cakes. So the average demand for the cakes can be given as total demand for 10 days divided by the number of days. So we have already selected here the demand for 10 days so when we add up all these value we will get the value as 270 and we have simulated for 10 days so the number of days is 10 so this is 270 by 10 which is 27 cakes per day so here we can see that the average cakes per day is 27 so from here we have uh, simulated the model and find out the stock at the end of 10 days and find the average demand for cakes per day. So this concludes our problem and if you like this piece of lecture, please share the lecture. Have a nice day. Thank you.